Good evening, everyone. I'm Kristen Muller, director of Peters Valley School of Craft, and I want to welcome you to our artist lecture tonight. Uh, tonight, we welcome Leo Tokoski. And um, before we start with Leo, we have a word from Rose Chachi, who is our um, host from the Greater Pike County Community Foundation. Hi everyone, my name is Rose Chiachi and I'm the Executive Director of the Pike County Public Library. I'm here to today to tell you how to sign up for a library card. If you're a Pike County resident, it's really easy. You just stop by with proof of residency and a photo ID and we'll get you all signed up. If you're not a resident, it's also really easy. You can just stop by with a photo ID and for $35, you'll have full access to all of the library resources. Unfortunately, right now our buildings aren't open to the public, but you can still sign up for a library card on our website, www.pcpl.org. Whether you're doing research for a project or looking for some inspiration, we can absolutely help you find what you're looking for. A really cool thing about libraries is that if we don't have the item that you're looking for, we can find it for you, no problem. We have a huge network of libraries in Pennsylvania and the entire country that we can borrow from on your behalf. Please check out our website, www.pcpl.org for all of the virtual opportunities we're offering right now, or give us a call with any questions. Finally, I wanna thank everyone from Peters Valley for bringing these great programs to our community and including the library. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the program. We are very grateful for the funding that helps us bring artists and stories from artists to you. Um, we are going to begin tonight um, with Leo and Leo is tuning in from Brooklyn. Leo Tokoski works at the intersection of cultural exchange, craft traditions, and the pursuit of knowledge of self. He blends glass making techniques with deconstructed graffiti iconography. He was born in New Mexico, raised in Miami, and now currently lives in Brooklyn. His experience living in many places and traveling to others has helped shape Leo's view of the world. Tokoski has worked in metal and glass shops since he could work and has an art school MFA from Alfred University, which is a very cold place. Um, he's also had solo exhibitions at Agnes Veris Art Center, Window Gallery, Brooklyn, New York, the Glass Wheel Studio, Norfolk, Virginia, the Ivy Brown Gallery, New York, New York. And currently he has work included in the LIT, Light and Transmission Exhibition at Pittsburgh Glass Center. He's a father and a husband. Leo works as a glass blower in Brooklyn and teaches glass at Tyler School of Art and Architecture. So welcome Leo and thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Thank you, Kristen. I forgot to say something. Please. One second. Sorry, sorry, people. It's been a while. Um, when, um, if any of you have questions, if you scroll to the bottom of the screen, there's a little Q&A section. Please post your questions there. And at the end of the lecture, we will ask Leo the questions. I'll read them off and you'll get to answer them, Leo. So if you have questions, put them there and in the chat, right. information about his website. So thank you and welcome, Leo. Thank you. Hip hop is art, but hip hop is a subculture as well as a form of knowledge and cultural production. It is music, it's movement, graffiti and wordsmithing, rap, and it is bombastic. This is a work that takes the graffiti tag and blends it with traditional sign bending techniques. Hip hop methodology is to compile and remix components and techniques to create new forms. 
hip hop is about layering. The layering of this sandblasted mirror with its frosted and reflected surfaces, as well as the added layer of its reflection on the wall across from it. Like hip hop, it reconfigures prefabricated snippets, samples, and concepts to generate new and unique forms. MCs, DJs, break dancers, and graffiti writers are the makers of the elements of the culture. And they are born of resistance. My first contact with glass was through neon. I'm drawn to the physicality of bending glass tubes and the fluidity of molten glass. The addition of bright, concentrated light makes neon a compelling form for graffiti styles. It is an illuminated statement. At some point, I start blowing glass. I fall in love with the process. The next step in molten manipulation of glass. And I wanted to use that process to continue to contribute to hip hop to express a culture of resistance, which in part is in opposition to the white Western hegemony and its homogenized monoculture. This blown form is a take on what would be a traditional enameled glass vase a stylized drawing of my own lips becomes the decorative ornament as well as a method of self-portraiture. Taking over the form of the vase and recontextualizing glass blowing. Not until you've heard Rakim on a rocky mountaintop have you heard hip hop. Extract the urban element that created it and let an open wide countryside illustrate it. In short, hip hop is everywhere. Take Pilchuck Glass School. A particular summer, a particular group of teachers and artists and students, a particular administration that was particularly concerned with graffiti tarnishing its outdoor mountainside feeling made a strong effort for those of us present to know on campus that it wasn't particularly welcome. So as a group of artists, it became crucial that we make a statement against the censure of our creativity. A through collaboration, a totem of light was constructed as a beacon on the side of a hill in the middle of a tree forest at Pilchuck Glass School. We lit it and then proceeded to bomb or spray paint the column as a way to give a finger to the administration. Seemingly out of place, yet so perfectly in place. I began to travel to Turkey biennially as part of the study abroad course I was working with. Turkey has thousands of years of history and culture. Seen here is the Hagia Sophia, once a, once a church, then a mosque, then a museum, and now a mosque again. The Ottoman imperial art and architecture is still very apparent today. Huge mosques are filled with stunning tile work and perfect calligraphy, a legacy of an empire that exemplified arts and crafts. Geometric configurations and large balanced calligraphy spoke to my aesthetic sense and seemed very familiar to me as art forms. Through traveling, 
learning and working in Turkey, I collaborated with Turkish and other artists, American artists in Istanbul, the capital. We created work that was emblematic of cultural exchange. The objects are many layers of paneled glass screen printed with imagery that was contributed by all of us involved and reflected multiple unique perspectives collaged in singular compositions of experience. When I came back to the States, I adopted the processes into my own work, shifting from the square format to the letter form and collaging imagery from my experiences. At its most enlightened, hip hop contains ideals of self-determination, self-knowledge, and political awareness. Artists like Erica Badu, Rakim Allah, KRS-One, and the Wu-Tang Clan proclaim knowledge of self as the path to self-actualization. A path to knowledge of self involves study of the supreme alphabet and supreme mathematics, a practice structured around breaking down numbers and letters in order to reveal their deeper meanings. core tenant associated with the supreme understanding are what's known as the 12 jewels embodied here in the graffiti style. They are in order what every human being deserves to live and thrive. Knowledge, wisdom, understanding, freedom, justice, and equality food, clothing, shelter, and love, peace, and happiness. This Moorish technique seen at the Alhambra Palace in Granada, Spain, is a prime example of the plaster work that artisans created where letters or calligraphy is decorative and contains meaning if you look closely at these floral patterns, the veins of the leaves are actually letter works that spell out different words and passages from the Quran and sometimes just the word Allah. This letter was inspired by that kind of layering This was a part of a solo show in Norfolk, Virginia, entitled Filthy Precision. Cargo. It's on the forks, you dorks, a dollar shirt wearing collar shirts and some cargo shorts. I brainstorm, rain form is a fortune of Forbes, the door fins gorge. I'm in the four door Ford when I record my letter form, wavy on the waveform. Ever since the death of the record store, we kept grinding like a peppercorn. It's not a metaphor when I perform on your platform. What you rap for? A rap for? Floor it with a I'm giving stock tips, rocking rocksmith, crazy combo, something like a locksmith, a contradiction, but I never gave a shit, yeah, someone asked me if I ever gave a shit, yeah, I take a bong rip and rage on that mosh tip, it's 
a crazy combo, something like a locksmith, a contradiction, but I never gave a shit, yeah, and someone asked me if I ever gave a shit. Eating like a king, she sorted me the quiche. The appetit is the hashish in the trees. Covered the keep son of the beach. Searching for the American dream. I shot the sheriff and the motherfucking deputy. Apparently, I'm a king, harmonic refugee. In Paris, the chariots carry a me, but we barely seen. Cause life is but a dream, real shit. I pop the fakey heel flip, but my girl does Reiki. So I heal quick, kind of flaky. Dreamscape surreal is peeling the years. I'm a dime of life pioneer, reverse engineered this verse for your ears. Fuck your peers and your peers drunk from a beer. My career's on clear by your peer. Mysterious, disappear in the mist. 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 Giving stock tips, rocking rocksmith, crazy combo, something like a locksmith, a contradiction, but I never gave a shit, yeah. Someone asked me if I ever gave a shit, yeah. I take a bomb, rip the rage on that mosh tip. It's crazy combo, something like a locksmith, a contradiction, but I never gave a shit, yeah. Someone asked me if I ever gave a shit. Graffiti is the written word of the hip hop movement. It is the element that is most visible and accessible. It is a form of street art that connects to people in an urban setting. Seen here is a blow molded, sculpted letter R and stylized arrow with vegetal forms. As an art form, graffiti is about beautifying letters through stylization and uses writing as a means of reclaiming and liberating the power of text, as well as reclaiming and occupying the places we reside. The craft is about the use of alphabets, where the letter is more than just a letter. It is a gesture or form filled with emotions, punctuated with stars and arrows for emphasis. This letter E is a fragmented mirror titled Equality. My work is often about breaking down the stylistic aspects of graffiti, deconstructing its elements into forms that sometimes are recognizable, sometimes are not. The arrow is a staple of all graffiti styles, represented in this chandelier titled So Many Styles. This work was in a show alongside other artists at Pittsburgh Glass Center. It was my first foray into the sculpted arrow as a hanging form. Geometry is an image of the structure of the cosmos. It can be used as a system to understand various features of the universe. and it reflects the purest forms of nature. These works are paint, stencils, and mixed media done while in residence at the Bucharta Artist Residence Program in Bad Honnef, Germany. These are investigations into the color and compositions that I later translate into glass sometimes directly, sometimes loosely. In this image, we see a glass panel stenciled with paint layered over a painted board. The 
translating that kind of technique directly into glass using sheet glass, enamels, and screen printed imagery, as well as paint marker letter forms fired onto the surface of the glass. sculpted, rolled up onto a blow pipe and sculpted it into a form. The panel is brought up to a high temperature so that it's malleable and rolled up onto a blow pipe and sculpted What's interesting in these particular forms is to see the screen printed and letter form imagery respond to the heat and gravity of molten glass and tool manipulation and embodying the graphic swim of the glass imagery. In 2017, I collaborated with Simon Clinell of Stockholm, Sweden, to create a series of forms that mashed up our two styles. Simon's work is about the history of Swedish glass and his contemporary lens that he puts upon it. I work with some new forms as well. investigating surface cutting and texture. The body of work we created is called semiotics, the study of symbology. The concept being that our two styles together question the idea of traditional glass forms. This work here is a complete deconstruction of a blown cylinder that has traditional cut glass star shapes and geometric tessellation relief on the surface, unrolled into a new form. The next year, we were invited to the Gustav's body Kunsthalle to create a new show based on the first semiotics show that we had. During a six week long residency at Stockholm Glass, Simon and I worked together to create a show that represented our collaboration through individual works set against each other in installation rather than collaborating on individual objects. Fabrique Styles is a chandelier that is externally lit. Deconstructed arrows and shapes seen here represent a methodology used reminiscent of factory style glass blowing, where glass was made quickly and efficiently to create a number of objects. And that way we could create the installation seen here.
Simon used his cutting styles to create other forms that were a part of the installation. as well as a contemporary style of zoetrope, a mechanized kinetic installation that had a platform with various basic glass forms set on it, spun at a high speed with a strobe light inside of the box that deconstructed and simultaneously blended each individual form into the next one. Fabrique Styles, again, is more than just about the individual glass units. There's many layers of imagery occurring in this piece. There is blue light being diffracted across the wall behind the piece, as well as the shadows being cast by the pieces in front of the projected light. Sometimes my work takes a much more literal tone. This work was created for a party, Halloween, 2018 at FOSI Center for Glass in Minneapolis, Minnesota. By constructing all of the unique letter forms individually and then placing them together like graffiti, we came up with this blue sculpture. I also had the chance to travel to other places, Jerusalem and Morocco, to see the craft traditions that take place in those regions, as well as to see how those traditions manifest. And see new traditions Hebrew graffiti, for instance. Not so much graffiti, but Eritrean scripts and signage. Again, inspiring new forms in the studio. rethinking layering and how light can affect glass. This installation titled Neon Medina comprises multiple blown glass forms and neon imagery clustered with paint and stencils to evoke the feelings of a medieval style Medina or marketplace commonly seen in North African and many Near Eastern old cities. In those Medinas are the wares and crafts and food and smells that people sell. And this installation was meant 
to evoke that feeling of sensory bliss. Embodying sculpted blown glass forms and new style enameling. As well as displaying glass on the wall. The viewer was meant to walk through the installation and get up close on the glass forms and light. In 2019, I was asked to participate in a two person show titled Graffiti and Ornament with ghetto potter Roberto Lugo. We were tasked with creating an installation of glass and ceramics in a federalist building in a rural cemetery in Western Philadelphia. We had to work within the parameters of a historical building, but also take into context the idea of creating work in a mansion. This work is nostalgia styles. Again, deconstructed graffiti elements hung in the window to catch and spread the sunlight. The color is reminiscent of different pieces of my grandmother's depression glass collection. working with abstract surface cutting and unique forms. As well as enameled and contemporary glass shapes. Other components of the installation included a diptych titled Ev, graffiti style for the nickname of my then recently deceased grandmother, an epitaph to her memory in Philadelphia, where she was from. Our works were placed throughout the mansion some in situ, some in spite of. You can see that arrow form I created with Simon next to a plate with Lugo's portraiture. A teapot and ruby. A residency at the Toledo Museum of Art Glass on Art Project Pavilion allowed me to investigate more the enamels and the enameling process that I've been trying to develop, essentially translating script into vitrified writing on the surface of the glass that is permanently fired on. And you can see that embodied in this crown form placed on the top of this star that is very heavily cut. And now moving into letter forms. Here's the A seen in three different versions cut and enameled. Here's the green flourish. Now adding in metallic armature, reminiscent of graffiti line work, spray paint drips and enameled and cut surfaces.
written here is the word knowledge embodied on the form number one. If we remember our 12 jewels, knowledge is first. Some of the most pertinent and what I'm titling or at least embodying as glass art that I've seen lately has been this installation, Fort Green Park in Brooklyn. It is glass and found materials, or should I say burned materials, swept up to spell out Black Lives Matter. One of the most powerful installations I've seen in quite some time. And that work has led me to endeavor on a, on a project where I take that language into the studio. Trying to push my enamel processes into a realm that basically embodies a new tradition in glass and enameling. Here you see the enamel being fired onto the surface of the glass before that glass is manipulated. spun out into a plate form, effectively stretching the lettering, reconfiguring it, and glorifying it. And this has been what I been focusing on in the studio as of late. Using these videos as well as a form of expression and social media as a way to amplify these objects beyond the pieces that they become and using the tradition of glass blowing as a methodology of speech. literally encasing my words in glass. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. That was really thought provoking. Wow, amazing work. Um, I, I know that a few questions are gonna be flowing in, but one thing that um, I guess one comment question um, is it, it seems like the, the work you were doing up until this moment um, where you're putting words more literally on your work, it seemed much more um, subliminal, I would say. Um, and um, I'm thinking that it, it, it's interesting to see that you're being much more literal, um, like taking the influence from the, the letters and the, the language as more pure form and color and shape and now really saying, okay, this, this message is really important. And yeah, I mean, um, I think that it's sort of part and parcel for the, for the situation. Um, mm. I guess up to this point, you're right. Like it's been a little bit more deconstructed mm -hmm. and I had hoped to 
embody some of those um, philosophies within that context. Um, but I just was feeling and am feeling that um, it can be a little bit more literal in this sense um, mm. because of the nature of <clears throat> our situation at the moment. Um, Black yeah. Lives Matter is just not taken that seriously. So I just needed to take it, you know, make it serious. Well, I think, I think it's really interesting because I think a lot of the work that um, organizations are doing, like the sort of this awakening and the, like the moving forward does kind of call for intentionality. So I, I, I mean, I, I think that we're certainly thinking about that. Like you have to be really intentional. So it's interesting to see that your work is literally literal and intentional. So that, that's an interesting direction. Um, I also uh, just wanted to um, comment that it's interesting. I always think about as a ceramic artist, you know, you're like physically transforming that clay and into from a liquid solid to a solid, right? And the sure. that glass is a super cooled liquid kind of blows my mind that like in the world, it's a super cooled liquid, the idea that glass is somehow still liquid um, and that you can work with the form in that way in such a fluid way it's so beautiful um, and that you're bringing other elements like the metal that piece that's got the the metal it looked almost like some kind of glass but it's yeah whatever. yeah uh, so that there's so much movement in your work that you're specifically tapping into that like that energy is really nice. Yeah, I mean, the more I work with glass, the more I get an understanding of it, but um, it also lets me sort of think within those parameters, like a lot of the, the forms that come out, you know, are designed with the intent of being of specific arrow, shape, star, but that fluidity then helps dictate more how it ends up turning out and, and what its final form looks like. It must um, be fun to follow it. <laughs> it is. Studio. It's wonderful. I love I love making glass. Um, it's like I said, it's been a conduit for expression for a long time, and I and I really appreciate it for that because it also is something that um, I'm constantly learning from. That's great. Um, we have a few questions here. Sure, let's, let's see. Yeah, we've got a bunch of questions here. Hold on. Uh, first one was, where can someone, where can, where can get someone to make eight glass prisms in red, blue, yellow, and clear sizing one by two? This is from Bob Carl. I have no idea. <laughs> Me neither, man. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, Liz Red says, when you say you use screen printed imagery, did you screen print onto glass? And if so, using what? Yes, screen printed imagery, um, screen printing on the glass using glass um, powders. Okay. So um, finely ground silica based pigments that I mix with a water based medium. Um, Oh, wow. And then squeegee through a screen, just like a regular screen print. Oh, wow. That's wild. Amazing. So, Thank make you. that wet, screen print it like ink, and fire it. Got to fire it. And then it's vitrified, turns into glossy glass, and um, it's permanent, like your Corona bottles. But, yeah. <laughs> um, Barry Hantman says, Leo, Barry here, Tyler grad. Any chance of visiting the Tyler studio as an observer? Yes and no. Yes and no. Yes in general, no right now. <laughs> right. Somehow I figured you'd say that. <laughs> but feel free to email me anytime you want and um, let's get you plugged in and get you set up to come to come back and see the shop when it's appropriate. It's a beautiful shop. It really is a beautiful shop. It is. Uh, Denise 
Ernst says, thank you, Leo, for sharing your work and knowledge. I love the layering of glass, enamel, and wood. Was the piece filthy precision with wood added? Yes. Yeah, the flat panel work is mounted on wood, and I try and incorporate the wood um, into the design to sort of either frame it or, or incorporate some of the negative space. Um, uh, but this, the glass has to get hung somehow, so it gets mounted on the wood, and the wood is then the framework that hangs on the wall. Okay. Um, then Brandy Clark says, do you find it freeing to be so literal? Say that again. Do you find it freeing to be so literal? Like now that you're doing this literal work, do you find that freeing? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's more about just like a, a, um, a secondary like methodology. Um, I'm still working on and through the more subliminal factors. Um, <clears throat> And I'm in really like an experimental phase with this, with this literal presentation. Like I said, like, I think it's so far, it's really been using the video footage of the, of the molten letters flowing and moving um, in, a, in, in like a social media way. Um, the finished things that come out of the kiln have a little bit less interests for me at the moment in in those particular experiments and so watching the videos i sort of am like i get reconnected to the work i get reconnected to the message um and then i'm like inspired to hopefully get some other glass artists to jump on the bandwagon with me um that's really what those that work is about i think at the moment i i think too that there's something um you know as you're talking about the the showing the process i think when you're the maker you get to enjoy the performance and it's a very intimate performance and there's something really nice about being able to share process in that sense because that's really the joy of the maker right that's when your heart's going pitter patter not when it's on the pedestal agreed so agreed that, that there is something about that in some ways, maybe the action of the writing and the, and then the firing. I mean, hip hop is a physical thing. That's why I feel like glass for me becomes another element of hip hop. Um, break dancing, emceeing, graffiti, everything is body. You're, you're in a space, you're claiming space. You are sharing space as well. Um, and you're sharing movement and graffiti is, is, is all movement. It's all body movement. Even when you're, you know, working this small to, you know, huge walls. Uh, and the glass shop, the hot glass specifically, does that for me. Um, and, and you're right. And that, and that sort of like um, the voyeuristic aspect of, of the making that, you know, like just watching yourself blow glass is sort of weird, but... Um, but it does allow you to sort of like look back and, and see what you're doing. And in the, and just to like bring it back to this, to this Black Lives Matter, um, sort of series, it's, it, it, it is about that embodiment of the glass studio, taking up space with the glass studio, taking up space with the gather. I mean, just like recontextualizing glass making at large, um, studio and studio art in a way that. Um, that I'm interested in, in, in stating. That's great. Um, thank you. Uh, Julia Zimmerman is asking, how were you introduced to hip hop? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I just turned 40 and I've been listening to hip hop since I was probably six. And I, um, which means that was the eighties and my mom was listening to hip hop. Um, so she bought the records and we listened to them in the house. Great. Um, Bonnie Shorsky is commenting. I really like the way you integrated various Muslim craft traditions and hip hop and black lives matter movements. 
have you done any large scale murals? Um, yeah, yeah, I have, I have done some large scale murals um, in this particular style, a couple, like one or two, and they're, they're uh, sort of personal uh, paintings. Um, I did some, I did something at uh, Ball, Bowling Green, um, but yeah, and they, they generally involve sort of macro scale geometry with tagging and, and um, some, you know, uh, sayings sometimes, um, usually like supreme knowledge uh, vocabulary. I, I, I really loved your um, photograph of the, um, the Jerusalem wall with the yeah. Yeah. That just that like that movement, just the gesture of it. It's so gorgeous, really beautiful. Um, and also, I think it's interesting for Americans to see that this whole idea of like writing on the walls is something that's quite ancient. You know, like yeah. our yeah. our our sort of Anglo culture doesn't really do that, right? So, the to, to see how the lettering right. on architecture all over the place in other parts of the world is really interesting it, the sort of like juxtaposition of that is that wall is like you know whatever you could say potentially that wall is whatever eons old um just for the context of where we were in jerusalem but the painting style is american new york graffiti right. style it's so cool <laughs> so like this like crazy back and forth layers sub layers and like you know absorption appropriation appreciation like uh, that's my thing like i love that I love like taking that and taking that and making them one thing. Wonderful. So Denise Ernst says, Leo, do you draw out your, do you draw out and sketch your ideas or, or is your art intuitive, like your process intuitive? Um, it's a little bit of both. There's a lot of drawing and sketching involved. Um, and uh, so, you know, constantly just like getting it down on paper, thinking it out on the table, you know. Um, but then once you <laughs> once you got molten glass on the stick, like everything changes. Um, I don't care how many thousands of years you've blown glass. Uh, there's always an element of time, heat, gravity, and you're, you got to make what you want out of that. Um, so the drawings up on the wall, and then, and then what comes out of the kiln is, is what it is. And that's, and that's how I work. It's a metaphor of life, right? <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> um, I mean, Kanek Chung said it all the time. Glass is life. Yeah. Um, Adeye Jean-Baptiste is asking the heavy question tonight. How do you manage bringing forth your identity and heavy themes in your work? as well as manage the emotional drain that come with it. <clears throat> um, how do you manage it? Uh, by making it. Making it is managing it. Um, there's a big hurdle in getting there, but uh, I think that a lot of about a lot of making a lot of like studio practice or whatever you call it, you know, your outlet of creativity, especially in a material sense, if we're talking about glass, ceramic, steel, you know, you know uh, a craft where you have learned something and then you apply that in a technical way to a material. Um, you got a lot of hurdles to cross or you know, jump over in terms of technique. If you if you're interested in that, but at the very least, you've got to know how to like turn on the welder or fire a kiln. Like, there's got to be something somewhere that you need to learn to figure out how to say what you want to say. You, what you have to figure out really after that is like if you want to say what you want to say, um, and crossing that line i think for me well i guess i could dial it in a little bit in my case it has to do with um 
a, a certain comfort level with technique. I've been working in glass for 20 years and the, the more I learn and the more I investigate in, into the processes, the more I'm ready to start articulating what I really want to say um, because I'm able to I have a lot more tools to say it the way I want to say it. Yeah. It's like you need that you need to have that vocabulary, right? The technical vocabulary. Um, Gabor Kiss is asking, does the color of the glass affect the way it flows in response to heat and gravity? Like do different it does. behave differently? Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Um, the colors are made in a similar way that oil paints and ceramic glazes are made. It's um, a silica base, meaning sand or something comparable to that, um, and other fluxes that help the sand melt, and different metals and oxides, iron, magnesium, um, cobalt, cadmium, selenium, these things cause the glass to react with heat and, and make colors. Um, and those metals and those oxides react differently to the heat and they become, in the business we call them stiff or soft. So you got stiff colors that react to the heat differently. They, they heat up slower and they, they move slower with more heat, whereas a softer color heats up quicker and moves quicker with less heat. Tricky. Yeah, tricky. <laughs> For sure. Um, I just want to check. I don't see any other questions, um, but uh, I just want to see if anybody made another comment. Uh, I see Jonathan Oyayong, Ohayong says, thank you. Beautiful, definitely thoughtful and inspiring. Um, and Thank you, Leo. Really enjoyed seeing your fresh take on glass and combination of techniques. That's Liz Red. Thanks, Liz. And um, oh, wait, a couple more questions popping in last minute. Um, Denise Ernst, your art is sort of spoken word art. Love the vases, beautiful yet emotional to them. Uh, beautiful and have emotion to them. How difficult is it to add words to pieces? Yeah, well, um, there's a couple different ways that I do it. Some of the pieces are literally written on with a particular type of enamel and they're filed. Some pieces are done in a sort of cameo style where two pieces of glass are layered and then I cut through a color with different wheels or sandblasting and that creates uh, imagery such as words. Um, other times it is... Um, screen printed on um, other times it's like just manipulated glass like different colors uh, applied to the surface and then manipulated um, different rods and canes and torch work so there's a number of ways to get that kind of imagery into the glass and I, I like to bounce around between between all of them depending on their effect and um, and what it is that's going on that's great so Jonathan Oh, hi, Yon. I hope I'm doing this right, Jonathan. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing. Um, are you finding that the glass world is changing with the global culture, or do you feel that your messaging is often butting up against the more limited view that the glass world often has had? Blam. Um, <laughs> well, I think that, I mean, you're right, the glass art and glass world has a sort of uh, singular view of, you know, artistic value. But I think that on the ground, there's a lot more places and people who are, um, open 
not not open i mean just regular people who who have who have interests and and different um perspectives and are open to perspectives uh than say the the global mon you know the monoculture um and <clears throat> You have to try and figure out how to how to exist in them uh, if you want. Um, I found myself existing sort of parallel to to everything. You know, I I have some fine art exhibition experience. I have craft exhibition experience. I have uh, craft teaching. You know, fine art MFA. Um, like I like. I, I've been I've been working in craft shops since I was 15 years old, um, and I guess what I'm saying is that there is more than just like the global glass monoculture that we often see, which is pretty um, pretty singular. But that's not the only thing that's out there. Um, and call me if you want to know what that is. <laughs> I think I think we're in a, a moment where we're going to see a lot more from a lot more people, and it's all it's the whole the whole art world is in that moment of reckoning in that sense. Um, uh, anonymous attendee, thank you, Leo. Agreed. All your work and particularly your recent work stop firing. And another anonymous attendee says, thank you, Leo, deep and meaningful work. Leo mentioned emailing him. Is that possible? Sure. You can just probably just go to your website. You can go to my website or it's Leo Tukoski at Gmail, or you can hit me up on Instagram, answer glass. I'll put it in chat. Fabulous. Thank you so much. What a, what a thought provoking lecture and presentation. Thank you so much, Leo. And thank you everyone for tuning in. What a pleasure and a treat. And you can look up Leo on Instagram and on your website. I don't know if, yeah, I don't know if that went out to everybody, but, but check my, yeah, check my website, Google my name. Well, actually don't Google my name. I don't really pop up there, but I think you can get up, you can get there from Corning, which Corning. has, they've got the, they got the number one spot these days. Yes, they do. I saw um, that. <laughs> um, but Leo Tukoski at Gmail or answer glass, A N S E R glass on Instagram. Um, Thank you so, so much. Have a good night. Me up. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thanks, Kristen. Bye bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. We would like to thank our sponsors for making programs like this possible. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to receive more like it in the future.